Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here. Let me go ahead and get this started. Uh, so we're going to be using the pair plot today. This is probably the most powerful of all the um, Seaborn tools that I've used. Perhaps not most powerful, but most uh, ubiquitous of these tools. I, I use this literally on every single data set that I examine. Uh, we're going to be using the iris data set this time instead of the tips data set. The iris data set has flowers uh, as well as uh, a couple of their features. So let's go ahead and show these bad boys. Okay, so the features that we're going to be examining, we've got four, petal width, petal length, sepal width, and sepal length. Uh, so these are aspects of flower. Um, and you notice it plots their joint distributions as well as their marginal distributions. Uh, the joint distributions are, of course, on the, uh, I guess, uh, triangles of this matrix. Uh, and the marginal distributions are down the center. The marginal distributions, histograms to begin with, joint distributions, are scatter plots <clears throat> to begin with. So this is pretty cool, pretty useful. Um, notice that uh, these, these you basically just invert the axes and you get the exact same diagram. Um, so this one is uh, sepal width by um, sepal length, and uh, this one is sepal length by sepal width. Um, so super useful, incredibly useful for looking at correlations across uh, multiple, well, again, just a dot core would also do it, but we're looking at relationships um, between these things but, uh, across multiple dimensions. Um, so pretty cool, pretty cool. You can go ahead and if you have a, a categorical data set, so if you're trying to uh, categorize these things, you can go ahead and plot their categories. Uh, so in this case, we take the hue and the species. We have three species here. Um, so these will be... Uh, uh, the um, so these will sort of be like the averages of sepal length uh, and sepal width and blah blah blah. Um, uh, this will sort of be the reds here will I guess be virginica uh, pointed on sepal length and sepal width. Um, so so again, you'll you'll notice that most of the virginicas have longer sepal lengths. You'll notice that most of the setosas have extremely short uh, petal width. So this is, it's again, uh, pretty useful. It's again, pretty nice. Um, I think the one thing that I really like to do with this though, is I like to, um, uh, I like to plot the reg. And uh, we'll, we'll get to that in just one second. So I just wanted to show you a couple more of these sorts of things. You can change the markers on any of these scatter plot diagrams. So previously when we were doing that joint plot, you could have changed the markers as well. So this will change the markers so that, uh, Satosa is a circle, Versicolor is a square, and Virginica is a diamond. Right, all of these. Um, you could go ahead and you can plot a smaller number of them using this VARS keyword. Uh, not super useful. You, you can always just separate those out of the data frame itself. Uh, you can uh, choose the XVARS and the YVARS. And notice if you don't choose XVARS and YVARS so that they overlap, uh, you'll only get to show the relationships. So we're looking at relationships between sepal width and length and petal length and width. Um, so you'll never see that histogram. They're all going to be joint plots. You've got two types of diagonals. Uh, diagonal one is the histogram. Diagonal two is the KDE, which I'll show you in just one second. And you have two types of uh, joints. Um, so again, you see KDE here. Um, histogram, I generally like a little bit better. KDE doesn't give me as much intuition. Uh, the regression, super cool. Um, I may as well get this final uh, plot started right after this one because it will take a while. So in this type, well, what you're going to be seeing is that on each of these joint plots, we go ahead and we plot a regression. Um, uh, not only do we plot the regression, but we do uh, confidence intervals around this regression, which is like super, super cool. Um, so, uh, so there you go. So you can look at relationships between these guys. Uh, again, this is not incredibly useful, but uh, petal length to petal width, notice that the relationship is extremely strong. Um, okay, and then you can plot the relationships across uh, different hues, uh, in this case, across different categories. Um, so, for example, you can look at petal length. Um, uh, it, it's extremely clustered in this case. The one that has the like biggest, strongest relationship between petal length and petal width seems to be the Versicolor. Um, again, if you plot the KDE, you get to see all of these KDEs. Um, so this is to show you a ton of information all in one chart. Um, I use these almost every time I have uh, a couple of dimensions. You need to uh, simmer it down. 
Once it gets more than five by five, it starts to become a little bit confusing, a little bit overwhelming. Four by four looks nicest. Um, three by three and two by two are both fine as well, but you know, you can, if for two by two, you may as well be doing a joint plot. Um, so, so this is super cool. Uh, I use this all the time. There's not a lot of weird parts to this. The weird parts come a little bit later on. You can do a lot of funky stuff if you're doing a factor grid, um, which we'll be getting to probably right at the end of these sort of tutorials. So factor grid will allow you to do all this sort of stuff that we've done right here with these pair plots and more, but it's a little bit more confusing how it works. So this is pair plot. I hope you guys learned something. And thanks again. Always a pleasure.